so Kyle and Michael, Stranger Things proved to be a, a breakout hit this season. Uh, how do you account for the success of this show with critics and audiences? Well, I didn't uh, decide it to be a thing, so. Sure, yeah. I mean, it was a bit of a surprise for, I think, everyone involved. I mean, we obviously know that when you have Winona Ryder and something like that on Netflix, it's going to have some eyes on it, but I don't think anyone really expected it to take off like it did. Um, I think, so, uh, I think the, heard. the kids had a lot to do with it, I think, because everybody kind of fell in love with them. Yeah, also, even in a similar way to the 80s, the, the show itself was given a lot of creative freedoms. Uh, technically, like logistically, with the net with Netflix and the directors and bringing us on and just letting everyone kind of be like, just go for it. It's yeah. kind of more how things used to happen and letting it be a little loose like that can be yeah, really think, positive. Yeah, there was a lot of faith and, you know, I mean, relatively unknown people. We had never done anything. The Duffers had done a couple of things, but fortunately they had the creative freedom to to make a show that and then it paid off so so yeah i mean you guys are new to composing i think this is your first credited show or film is that right that's right so talk about coming into something like this uh for the very first time uh, was it like learning as you go or what was that experience like yeah i mean the music part we had down pretty well i mean it's a little bit different writing for a record as opposed to writing for a picture. But I mean, we both went out and bought the Berkeley School of Music uh, guide to scoring and read that, you know, to, to kind of, you know, get used to the yeah. terminology and things like that. So that it was definitely a learning process and, you know, doing research, watching some of the older or films that we thought we liked the music too. Yeah, trying to pay a little more attention to previous films and things we like that we might want to try to show people mm -hmm. uh, things that have influenced us a bit. Yeah, I mean, you always think that you, or I always thought, you know, I, I, I like I like music in, in movies and I listen to it. And then when I actually was going back to do that research, I realized how much stuff I didn't actually hear. And most people don't hear in, in film or, or TV. Well, why do you think you guys got chosen for this? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what about your music, do you think? I'm kidding. Um, well, I, I think the stuff we write kind of naturally has a cinematic feel to it, and it's instrumental, so that doesn't hurt. You know, we're not a vocal-driven band, so that's two steps in the right, right. direction for, for scoring. The Duffers had mentioned... Uh, definitely the show, I mean, nostalgia of being from 83, but also they didn't want it to be just like a retro throwback. They wanted it to be modern, and there's something about our music that was cinematic as well as retro, as well as modern. So it really fit with that, the bullet points, like that criteria. They were looking for that. So they, they came to us and asked us if we were um, actively producing music still and if we'd be interested. You, you bring up a good point there about the, the nostalgia and the steeped in the 80s. I mean, obviously, this is very influenced by uh, things like that, but it's also a, a modern to it, and it's its own unique thing. So I guess I wonder in the music how you guys sort of towed that line, if that makes sense. Well, <clears throat> I think just given that we use a lot of older equipment, just because we prefer the sound of it, that... Can dictate that that kind of covers the basis of of getting that retro sound. I, I I think, but I think we incorporated a lot of melodies and things like that that are more modern, I suppose. And and we also use new equipment as well. You know, we're not analog purists by any means, but we do have a lot of old vintage analog gear that we like to use. Um, and I mean, even just like if you think of the, the genre of horror, like in the late 70s, early 80s, there's kind of a particular sound, like you can think of like Halloween or something like that, that's very like, ding, 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 you know, with all the half steps and everything. 
But if you do that now, it's kind of like for a suspenseful scene, it's maybe a little, maybe a little cheesy. So and I, I, I feel like a lot of the more modern horror kind of leans more heavily on sound design for those types of, for that tension and more experimental yeah, types of. A lot of eight tonalness instead of being. So I think that's harmonic and I think that has a lot to do with it. Well, I think most of the nostalgia that you guys evoke is probably in the main title theme. Can you talk a bit about uh, creating that? Yeah. Um, any specific questions? Uh, well, I mean, just in terms of creating something that would set a mood and a tone for the show. I mean, what, you know, so we did what see were your ideas? We had, we'd sent over a couple ideas. Um, the Duffers went back on one of the earlier kind of just demos that we sent them. Uh, they felt something in the mood of that piece. And they started early on, we were pairing it up with like typography and ways of trying, like we were there from the beginning of trying to figure out the aesthetics of what the title sequence would look like as well as what it would sound like. So I think it was nice that we weren't just brought in to do something for that. We were actually, they had, they had the music and a little bit of an idea of it as they were sculpting the way that was going to look. We were doing it all together. It's, it's kind of a tough one. I mean, something about the, those notes just kind of, it sits in a, a somewhat neutral place where it's not overtly scary or anything, but it has kind of a, a mystery to it that I think really, really captures what's happening in the, in the show. It's, it's like hard to drama. explain why. It's hard to explain There's why it works. Mystery. It, just, it just sounds right. pretty retro. It's produced kind of where it would sound older. Um, but it, like, as you said, it's actually in like a major key. So it like musically, it's in a, that would, but for, you know, evoke more positive emotion, but it still sounds dark, still sounds mysterious, has some drama. So it captures a lot of, I would, I, it's hard to explain. Exactly. Right, no, I, I understand. It's hard to explain music. Um, uh, working with the... Uh, unicorn magic. Yeah. Right. You know, um, magic. Right. Um, working with the Duffer brothers and, and Sean Levy, uh, who directed all the episodes from the first season, and they were the creators and executive producers, what did they give you guys that helped you uh, find that correct tone and, and style? It was, we had a lot of conversations with them, you know, I think that is really what it was. Um, we gave them a lot of material and just took a little while to kind of figure out what, what they liked about certain things and what they didn't like about certain things. And, but generally, and they, you know, they're always like, we love all this stuff. It's just not working exactly the way we need this scene to go. So. When we would have that kind of feedback, it wasn't. It was. It was like a conversation. It, it didn't feel. They weren't too heavy-handed with anything, you know. They're. It, it, they're great collaborators, all of them. Yeah, they they all know how to express quite a bit of what they want in, out of music. At least uh, the effect they wanted to have on the people, the viewers. So. You could see, you could understand what you did, what you did, and then maybe why it wasn't reaching their goal, the final, or why it was, and or why it was, and uh, try to repeat it, what you were doing right. So we did spend a lot of time back and forth early on, so, and that's things even became a lot smoother, um, confidence in things yeah. sticking uh, when you score a scene, and then that it works and that they like it. Were there influences, specific influences that you guys had or that the, the Duffer brothers pointed to and, and said, you know, we want to try to invoke something like this or? I mean, yeah, there were things that they would fight. And we obviously got some temp music at times. Um, and some of the stuff that they had in there just worked perfectly and there was no reason for us to try to recreate it. So there's a couple of Tangerine Dream songs that made it into some of the later episodes. 
And we saw that in there and we we're like, hey, this is sure we could try to make that, but this is great as as it is. So she probably just use that. Um, they brought up things like John Carpenter and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I think they would they would use a lot of references that are so different. Sometimes you'd say like it's coming of age and it's like E. T. and they're like John Carpenter and this, but then you're like you listen to those and like a John Williams score is like extremely whimsical. So we're definitely not going to do music like what E.T. did, but they wanted to have some effect on people in a similar way of the mood that somehow the Spielberg film and the music had together. So we had to kind of come up with our own version of some of those things. I think generally we, we succeeded in that without you know just blatantly ripping off anyone. Yes, you did. Um, <laughs> uh, congratulations. Uh, have you guys started working on the second season or not? I know that yeah, any yeah. fans are going to wonder. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we have. If you could sum up it in maybe five words that would not spoil anything, what would you, uh, what would you say? I will not spoil this. <laughs> you can be excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this will be really good. I'm just kidding. Um, it's, it's, it's another season of Stranger Things, and we've got some new characters that I think everyone's going to like. I've, I'm starting to like, I mean, not starting to, but I like the new characters that, that we have, and I, and I think people are going to enjoy it. Yeah, I think, it's, I think the writing is really strong, and I, I'm enjoying and waiting, getting more episodes. So yeah, I just, you can have faith in it. We don't know how it's going to end yet. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm certainly looking forward to it, and I know a lot of people are as well, gentlemen. Thank you so much, and congratulations on your work. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good one.